Hi and welcome to episode 40 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage and I'm a wedding photographer too. So great to be talking to the fab Logan Weston today. Logan is based in the USA and has won an incredible six story awards from us and seven reportage awards too. He's also just won a family story award and our brand new sister site for documentary family photography, This Is Reportage Family. He shares so much with us in this episode, including his experience as a photojournalist, the story behind one of his specific reportage awards, the reason he learned to ski, tips on story awards, what success means to him, and much more. Before we get on to Logan, I just want to mention a contest we're running at the moment. We're celebrating the use of 100,000 uses of the This Is Reportage hashtag on Insta, which is pretty amazing, by giving away 100,000 hours of membership. That equates to 11.4 years, but we're rounding it up to 12. So yeah, basically a bit of a long-winded way to say that we're giving away 12 annual memberships. The contest is open to new and existing members, and you can find out all the details on how to enter on our blog. Good luck if you enter. Right, on to Logan. Hey, Logan, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. All good. All good down here in um, in England. Yeah, how's things with you? Because you're, you're in America, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in uh, uh, America. I live in Washington State, um, kind of by, uh, really close to Seattle, but outside of Seattle just a little bit, um, but kind of in that Puget Sound, Seattle area. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'd, lo- I'd love to visit someday. My American geography hit knowledge is so bad you know i've only been to vegas i've been like six times i've never been anywhere else in america that's that's hilarious because i've never been to vegas um, have you not really but, no uh, <laughs> no i haven't no my wife's gone a bunch of times because she goes down there for like trade shows and stuff um, oh yeah but i've never been down there um never been tempted uh, no never have uh, we've always talked about it, actually we've always talked about for like one of our birthdays of flying there because you can usually get really cheap flights flying there with no luggage no nothing just ourselves oh. Oh, and then that. getting a return flight the next morning. So just going there <laughs> midday, staying all night, staying up all through the night, and then flying back early in the morning. Um, no hotel, no nothing. So you should maybe, maybe we'll do that, that someday. Yeah, you should. That'd be great, <laughs> man. That's the perfect place to do that. Have you yeah. um, you never been tempted for WPPI even? No? No. Um, uh, like a mini WPPI used to travel around and stuff. And it, it came through Portland once where I used to live. And I went to that. And it was it kind of was like everything i needed it was like all in one day a little bit of trade show some awesome speakers um so i i kind of did would do those local ones where i could just like kind of drive from my house and uh but um but maybe in the future yeah you should do it i i, I just yeah. love vegas man i do i love it it's like the opposite of where i live in like the southwest of england it, it really yeah. is <laughs> Um, Does England have anything like a Vegas or anything like that? Uh, not, no, nothing that compares. No, no it really yeah. doesn't. So I mean, it's, it's really its own thing. It's unique to the whole world kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> totally. You've got to experience it. Just one, I think that plan of going down, not having a hotel and just staying up, yeah. and like, that is a good plan. That's I think that's what I think. That, I think we'll do that someday. Maybe even for our 30th birthday. Yeah. It's like a good way to end my 20s. Wow, you're not even 30 yet. Man, you're young. No, almost, almost uh, like a year and a half, maybe. Wow. Turn 30, I think. Yeah. Gosh, wow, that's awesome. Wow, I didn't know you were that young. I mean, the quality of your work, you seem like I, I just thought I presumed, I guess ev- I think yeah. I think everyone I presume is about my age, I think, for some reason. But I'm old. I've got to gotta realize I am old. Yeah. I- <laughs> well, it's funny, I'm the other way around. Every time I look at people, sometimes I think, oh, they must be in like their like late twenties, like early thirties, but sometimes they're not. And I'm just like blown away. I just feel like I mean, I think some people are so much younger than they really are. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? We have, yeah, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, that perspective, perception. Yeah. So, how how far away from Seattle are you then? Um, so it kind of depends. I'm like, we're like ten miles if you were to draw like a straight line to Seattle, oh, which okay. isn't that far, but that is through just water. Um, so right. that would take it takes like an hour ferry ride to get there. Um, oh, right. But if you were to drive, you kind of have to drive all the way around the water, and it takes about an hour. So it seems far, but it's like close um uh, okay, but when i travel there i usually i usually take a ferry a ferry boat um and then i usually can work on there and then uh, get into seattle really easy uh, that's cool you know it's a place yeah. i kind of always wanted to go because I, I used to be a big um nirvana fan growing up um, oh yeah you know, so, so that was yeah and you're into your music aren't you oh yeah i love music um been uh music's kind of been an important thing in my my whole like since like my teenage years on that's cool. I wasn't it was photographing yeah. concerts was, was one of your passions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was actually kind of how I I mean that's not how I first got into photography. That was kind of 
it's, it was kind of my first passion in photography. You know, the photography was always kind of something that I was really interested in. Um, but when it became something that like, wow, this could be, this is like a serious passion. I like really felt something inside like music photography was the first thing. Um, oh, and it kind of cool. started with me. I was looking at some, one of my favorite bands and I saw some photography from like their tour photographer. And I was just like connected to it in such a way that I'd never connected with photography before. Um, and from there I was like, I got to photograph concerts. It's like, I love listening to music. I love photography. Got to combine these two things. Um, that's cool. So I started photographing some smaller, smaller groups, some smaller bands, and have kind of uh, led it on to photographing larger, larger bands these days. Ah, uh, that's cool, man. And yeah. I think I you know I've not done much myself at all gig photography, but it's it's a difficult thing, isn't it? I mean, and you must learn a lot from doing that with kind of movement and really low lights, and yeah, it must be it's yeah, quite tricky. yeah. It's really its own thing, and the hardest thing too is um, when you go to photograph a concert. Usually, you're there. Um, unless you're actually photographing directly for the band, if you're photographing for like a press um, outlet or something, usually you only get the first three songs. So you have to get everything you need in the first three songs, um, which in the first three songs just blow by sometimes um, with all the adrenaline and the, um, some yeah. sor- shorter songs. It can be over in like a like nine minutes. You got to do your whole job in nine minutes. Oh. So <laughs> That's more really stressful than a wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, it really is. Yeah, and especially and then the lights too, because if like the lights if like the lighting engineer programs like really bad lighting for like the first couple songs, like in the last song is the one with like really great light, then you're really oh. even like only down to like three minutes sometimes. Um, mm. So um, it's always kind of tricky, but um, it's, it's such an adrenaline rush and so rewarding after the fact um, that it's, it's something that's I'll probably do the rest of my life. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. So you're still doing it. I guess it's, you've not been doing much in Corona times though. There's not been many gigs I imagine at the moment. <laughs> No, yeah, it's kind of it kind of sucks. Um, that's like the one of the one of the first things that when coronavirus was kind of hitting Seattle, it was the first thing to kind of go. Um, I was actually supposed to photograph a concert the, the night that they kind of imposed all closing a, or canceling all events in Seattle. Uh, um, right. Yeah, it was back in March. So I haven't done anything since March. But um, yeah, hoping hoping things will start up again. There's some yeah. places around here that have been doing some like drive-in concerts where people will like drive in kind of like a movie oh, theater cool. with like their cars like separated um <laughs> oh, so wow. maybe some of that stuff could, could kind of bring start to bring it back while we're kind of waiting for the pandemic to to end yeah well that's cool well you yeah. need a long lens probably if you're going to be have to be stuck yeah in cars away <laughs> yeah there's probably yeah because usually when you're photographing you're like in the photo pit so you're like three to five feet away but the photo pit is probably like farther away and they probably want you to shoot from like 20 feet um so Okay. It'll change things up a little bit. Yeah, it will, won't it? It yeah. will. Um, and yet, yeah, while it's still on, because I, I find the music photography really interesting, actually. What's, mm-hmm. um, do you, you know, when you're taking photographs, do you ever just find yourself, if you really like the band that you're photographing, do you ever just mm-hmm. find yourself just like forgetting to photograph and just kind of like singing along and stuff? Yeah. I mean, it's really hard because, like, at the same time, I know I have a short period of time, so I got to get the photos. But, like, sometimes I wish I, like, will sit there and just kind of, like, especially in between songs where they're, like, maybe talking or they're more, like, tuning their instruments. I'll kind of just sit there and, like, take it all in and just, like, be in awe that, like, I'm this close to, like, one of my favorite bands getting to photograph them. Um, But actually, when it's, like, those bands that are, like, my my, uh, ultimate favorite band, I, like, I don't want to miss anything. So I'll actually turn on the shutter drive on my camera to, like, 12 frames per second or whatever the mm-hmm. highest it is and like just like motor drive the whole like nine minutes just so i like don't miss anything that's like happening so i like can get it um but that's okay. usually only with like my favorite favorite bands who are like super active and running okay, around the stage yeah. well, that's, that's a good idea what's been your favorite band to photograph yeah um it's really hard i've been doing it for like eight years and people always ask that and i never have like a good answer <laughs> there's always so many um but i think the one that always comes back to me is switchfoot and oh, switchfoot's okay. like one of those older bands that people know from like eight years ago but they're still touring and they're still active and they're so good live they like they move around the stage a lot they they do interesting things with their instruments their live show is always super impressive and lively um but they're always like my go-to like I know they're going to put on a good show. They're going to have they're, the photos that come out of it are going to be, going to be really good. Um, Sounds cool. And then like another, heard. you haven't heard of Switchfoot? No, I haven't. No, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, you you probably you probably have. You just don't know. There's like a there's like a couple songs. They were in like a really popular movie, and like 
the 90s or maybe late 2000s it was like really popular um uh, okay. i can't remember what it's called but um i bet if i bet if i remembered and told you you'd, you'd remember but probably uh, I think but yeah. i'm old man i think i'm too old i'm too old <laughs> <laughs> maybe i don't know because they're they're pretty old too they're they've been around for a long time um but but yeah they're really good um, uh, okay they're really fun to about. photograph what yeah. kind of music then they're um they started out with like they were like christian rock and then they kind of kind of um they kind of they didn't separate from the Christian, but I think they just kind of expanded their um, what their options of what they could sing about and stuff. But they're um, they're kind of like rock indie rock kind of um, band. Um, they're yeah, they're really good. They're from like California, San Diego, and they're, like really into surfing. So it's kind of like surf rock almost kind of uh, okay. thing where they're uh, they're like really uh, influenced by that kind of stuff. Um, really positive music and. Uh, um, yeah, sounds good. I'll, ch- I'll yeah, check them out. Yeah. I will check them out. Yeah. Um, and while we 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 mentioned there about how Corona has been affecting obviously the music photography, how's mm-hmm. it been? How's it been for you? How's it been affecting you know your weddings? What's what's the scene there at the moment? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Seattle was hit. Seattle was one of the first epidemic centers in America. It was kind of I think a lot of people were flying over from China to Seattle, and it's kind of mm-hmm. a big um, hub for people flying over. And I think. I think it kind of started here and it kind of expanded. So we got hit pretty hard early on. Um, so a lot of things got canceled kind of in March. A lot of things got canceled. I had um, three weddings back back to back weekends over three weeks. Um, and one of them I was attending as a guest and I wasn't able to attend just because it was it was at the height of the um, mm-hmm. of the worry of everything. So we had to cancel. And then two weekends after were weddings, I had to photograph and they all got postponed. Um, and then everything's kind of postponed since then. Um, but things are kind of starting to look a little bit better now. Um, our numbers have dropped considerably. I think our, our state and our governor has done a really good job at kind of um, um, correcting us and, you know, lowering the numbers and flattening that curve. So okay. um, slightly larger weddings are starting to happen. Uh, a lot of restrictions on them, but kind of um, people are starting to to move forward with some plans. Um, anything that's like a really big wedding seems to be pushed off for till next year. Most have been postponed to next year. Mm, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's been mad, isn't it? It's mad. Just, um, I should just say actually for, cause we never know when people are going to be listening that we're recording this on the 16th of July. Cause, um, things change so quickly, don't they as well. Um, yeah, so wh- wh- when's the next wedding that you're kind of supposed to be photographing, you yeah. know, if it, if it doesn't postpone. Yeah, we're actually supposed to, me and my wife are supposed to photograph a wedding um, uh, next Saturday, actually, in Rhode Island, um, oh, wow. okay. which is um, all the way across the country. So we have to fly to it, and it's like a five-hour flight. Um, oh, wow. And actually, yeah, actually, right before this, um, I I got, a, I got a phone call from their um, Rhode Island State Depart- uh, Health State Department, because um, they've actually been trying to figure out if it's actually legal for us to fly over there. Sure, and if it's yeah. Safe. Because every state kind of has different rules, and um, for people traveling in, they're trying to make sure that the the spread from one state to another doesn't happen. Um, right. But I just got the call that um, we should be safe to to travel there um, and photograph the wedding. So that was oh. that was a huge relief for us. That's great. Yeah. How yeah. exciting as well. I know. To be shooting a wedding again. I know. We're really oh, excited. Man. Yeah. yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of different things about it, but um, it'll still be good to photograph it. And, uh, yeah. Oh, just that feeling just to be shooting again will be awesome. Yeah. Like, like, is it yeah. going to be a lot, a lot smaller guests? Is it, or can they still have a decent number? Or do you know? Yeah, I think. Um, well, the state we're going to shoot in is a state that's also doing really well. Their numbers are super low. Um, okay. Their governor's done an amazing job at um, keeping everybody there safe. Um, and so I think they're they're um, allowed to have. I think about 50 to 75 guests oh, okay. um, That's pretty in an good. outdoor venue. Um, so pretty, pretty good size. I think they did have to cut their guest list in like half or something, um, which, which is tough, but um, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are they still allowed to going to have a, like an evening party inside and things or. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I think they have a good idea. They've, um, they've done everything they need to. They've like contacted their governor's office to like get write offs on all their precautions they're doing and everything. Uh, so, cool. so so I believe they're doing everything they need to do to hold it, but I'm not sure exactly what the reception celebrations will be like. Um, I'm mm-hmm. sure people that are like within households will be maybe dancing together and stuff like that, but yeah. I bet there won't be like the big, big dance floors. But, um, but I mean, you never know. I don't, I'm not sure what they're, what um, uh, exactly they have planned. 
Well, you're going to see, which is really exciting. Yeah. And yeah, even I though know. it's poss- obviously, I mean, it's pretty maybe uh, maybe a bit sad for the bride and groom having to cut their guests, but also it's it's a unique event, isn't it? A unique event in time that you're going to be able to photograph and something, yeah, that hopefully you're not really going to be able to see again. So it's going to, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. It'll be it'll be the first one I've done since it all started. So um, I'm excited to kind of see what it is. And um, I mean, the way I, I photograph weddings, it's all storytelling. So whatever the story is, it's kind of important to document that, um, along with uh, their wedding and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Oh man. And I love your work. And, and that brings me on to something that I love, um, on your website, you have like three different portfolios and for your moments portfolio, you introduce it with the words, um, this is the most important portfolio gallery, which I couldn't agree more with. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. awesome. Have you just, you know, have you always like right from the beginning, like focused on the documentary side of coverage or has your style kind of changed over the years? How, how has it been for you? Yeah. Um, I'd say for like, 80% of my career, it's been this documentary focus. Um, but at the very beginning, when it kind of was like dabbling in wedding photography, mm-hmm. I kind of didn't really have a good idea of what wedding photography was. Um, so I kind of just jumped into it with like, no experience, um, no understanding of what it is or what it could be um, mentality. And it wasn't anything that I'm doing now. Um, but early on, I, um, in order to get experience, I was second shooting and I met this photographer and he shot in a very documentary way. Um, and he kind of turned me on to this new way of thinking of photographing weddings, um, being very photojournalistic. And he um, told me about all these cool photographers that are um, shooting weddings in a very photojournalistic way. And I was yeah, cool. really inspired by all that. And it kind of, from there, I kind of took that approach and have kind of just gone with it and um, further developed it over the years. Oh, that's cool man over the years though but you're still like not even 30 it's so yeah cool. <laughs> i know well i got i've been doing this since and I, I mean when i first started it was it was me just kind of shooting and just having fun taking pictures i kind of started in college so i kind of had i've been doing it since then um right okay i knew you yeah. rocking it and you worked as a photojournalist didn't you for a few years um can you tell us about that yeah. including the the chicken wing eating contest that you covered didn't yeah you? <laughs> so um my photojournalism experience was mainly at um through the WCU um the school that I went to, Washington State University. Um yeah. their photojournalism school had a newspaper and I um when I was living in the dorms, one of my friends was like, Hey, the newspaper's hiring photographers. I know you take pictures, you should go apply. And I was like, Yeah, I don't really like taking pictures of people. I'm <laughs> be really awkward and not really good at that th- kind of thing but he's like oh you should go do it you could probably get paid for it or something your pictures are really good so i was like i was like okay so i went there and i applied um and they were kind of looking through my work and i didn't really have any photojournalism experience it was just kind of pictures i took of my family and they're like they're, they kind of thought they're like yeah we can kind of see some potential here so they brought me on and um i kind of did that all through college um and it was a really great learning opportunity there were so many different things that i got a photograph that i'd never photographed before and so many like learning experiences um, that I learned throughout there that I that I still use today. Oh, um, that's, and then that's that, cool. Yeah. The, yeah. What the was chicken, the chicken wing? Yeah, <laughs> chicken, wing. chicken wing eating contest. I think that was. I'm trying to remember exactly what that event was. I think it was like it might have been like a Super Bowl party or like something with like a big football game or some big sporting event. Right. But they wanted people to go out and they wanted they hired they told me to go out um, to the to this bar because they were having this. Um, to photograph people enjoying whatever was going on. And there was a chicken wing eating contest. And that became like, I think the story of um, what was happening. I can't remember exactly what the story was. Um, but yeah, it was uh, two guys at the table eating chicken wing, really hot chicken wings. Um, <laughs> and that was kind of one of the standout totally think one of those things i've only done once and never done again (laughs) no that's cool and a a great basis though then to be going into weddings and taking that photojournalistic style how how did you get then how did you decide that you wanted to kind of photograph weddings how did how did you get your very first one yeah um so i really loved all the photojournalism stuff i was doing and working for the newspaper um but the degree i was getting i was actually going to school for um interior design that was kind of what i was kind of focused on at the time um my degree moved me we were we were at wsu spoke uh wsu pullman for a period of time and then um they moved all of us to a different campus um that was in like a larger city so we could get more experience working with professionals in the city and stuff like that um and when i moved to the other campus 
there was no newspaper at that campus. So I wasn't able to shoot anything. And I really missed um, having um, different things to photograph every day. Um, okay. So I was like, I was kind of thinking, I was like, well, what can I do that's like similar, but um, I can still kind of have that experience and that, um, yeah, that experience. And I was thinking, I was like, well, weddings are kind of, there's a lot of moments that happen at weddings and like, there's kind of a similar style and you kind of the similar experience. So I kind of thought weddings would be a great spot to, to kind of go. And I reached out to, um, a guy and I, um, his name is Matt Shoemate. He's a credible photographer. Um, and he said I could come second shoot for him and kind of tag along and shoot some of the weddings. Um, and after that, it kind of just went from there and I kind of fell in love with the whole thing and, um, it kind of snowballed into what it is today. Yeah, man, awesome. So did you enjoy it right from the very first one when you were second shooting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, I kind of came in with this mentality that it was going to be a lot of fun. And he he was the one that kind of showed me that weddings can be photographed um, with a photojournalistic and documentary perspective. Um, yeah. Because I was kind of reaching out to him in like a different manner of photographing weddings. And he's like, no, man, you're going to shoot weddings like this. Because like you, you had that experience, like use it and the wedding's the photos you'll get from these weddings will be really great um, if you shoot in that style. Um, so kind of just uh, used his experience and his knowledge and kind of took that and ran with it. Oh, man. Awesome. And you're totally rocking it. it awesome. When, so what, what year was your first wedding? Um, that was your wedding, you know, like your your first proper paid yeah. wedding. When was that? Yeah, actually, yeah, I think I think it was like 2000. Okay. I need to think about this for a second. <laughs> That's okay. I need it. You might need to edit this part. Um, <laughs> I think right. it was like 2013, 2013 or like 2012. Right. Okay. Um, Not long. Yeah, ago. that was when I shot my first one. Yeah, and it was it was a very it was it was like I posted on like the Knot. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Website and it was kind of like it was very like basic, low budget. Um, but the weddings that I got out of that year were great weddings that kind of fueled my portfolio for a number of years. And, uh, um, uh, it's still, there's like, I think I still have like two or three photos from that first year that sometimes make it back into my portfolio, which, which I think is really kind of cool and really kind of special that my portfolio is really like an example of the, the photos I've taken throughout my whole career. That's um, very cool. Yeah. From the very first year, even. I wonder if that's quite unique, actually. I'm just thinking of myself, whether I've got any photos in my main portfolio from my first year of weddings. I really yeah. don't know, because, oh, man, yeah, I've definitely... There's, there's I've got not a bit many, better. but there is... Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying I've got a bit better. You know, from beginning, I wasn't that very good right at the beginning. So my, my portfolio has definitely got a bit better. So, But it's great that you've got some yeah. from your first year in yours. Yeah, yeah, not many. I mean, there, there, there um, was a lot of photos that definitely aren't in my portfolio but there's like there's like one or two and um they kind of filter in and out as i kind of adjust it and refresh my portfolio but mm, no that's cool cool man let, let's change tack slightly let's change tack yeah slightly. let's go because i think i i think i saw on your site how you're a netflix comedy fan so is that well it doesn't have to be comedy but yeah have you got any kind of favorite netflix series of all time or something that you're watching at the moment that you can recommend yeah um i mean i watch the office and parks and rec like uh, daily okay. it's kind of like my um i don't have any coworkers here because i work at home so usually i put the office on and they're kind of i like to consider them my coworkers. Um, oh that's cool <laughs> that's cool yeah but, you know what um, i've never i've never seen the american office so i've seen the uk office so i need to watch the american because there's a lot more series isn't there in the american yeah office, I think. it goes on for quite a while um there's like six or seven or eight seasons yeah okay. um, yeah it. i've only have seen you... the, the british office um, I've only seen the first season, um, and it was and it was pretty good. I know I know the humor for uh, is is slightly different, but it's but if you pay attention, it's actually it's hilarious stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, I'll have to watch it. Yeah. Anything else? What you're watching at the any different series at the moment? Yeah. Um. Right now, um, I've really gotten into um, Camille Nanjiani, comedian. Um, he's a um comedian from pakistan but he lives in america now and i've really gotten into his stuff we just watched one of his um comedy movies his early one the big sick and that was um i i can't remember the last time i la i laughed out loud that many times uh, that watching a good. comedy um and it's it's just really good so now i'm like trying to find all his stuff so i've kind of been going back through and um watching all his appearances on uh, the show portlandia um Oh, okay. which was popular a number of years ago, um, which is actually kind of fun because I grew up um, in the Portland area. Um, so it's kind of fun to, to watch a show based oh, on... Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you recognize, do you recognize locations and stuff? 
Um, some of them, yeah, yeah. I didn't live like in a lot of those areas, but I, we'd like travel there every once in a while. Um, and it's just kind of fun to like see locations and like hear of streets and like different things around Portland. Um, so that was always kind of fun. Um, and then other shows. Um, let me think. We've actually, I've actually not watched a lot of comedy stuff. I feel like there hasn't been a ton of comedy coming out, but we've watched a lot of like dark stuff recently. Um, oh, cool. Like, we just watched um, The Ozarks, which was really, really good. Oh, yeah. We're still partway through the third season of that, actually. It's great, isn't it? Oh, it's so good. It's, it's like so addicting and like thrilling. Um, yeah, I can't get enough of that show. Talking of dark programs, have you seen the program called Dark? I have heard of it, but I have not watched it yet. Oh man, honestly, it's so good. It's so good. It's like, if, especially if you like anything to do with time travel, it is on. It's the best thing that ever done about time travel. It's German. Watch it in subtitles, but you know, in German language rather than dubbed. And it is so good. It's so good. Oh, it's it's not even. It's in German. Yeah, it's in German. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that, yeah. Seen a lot of that. So I'll, I just, actually just wrote that down. So I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, it's brilliant. Honestly, it's so good. And what are we watch? We're we watching for light relief. We're watching um, Shit's Creek at the moment. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We actually um, we're we're watching it again for the second time, all the way through. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, actually, I we we're watching it on Netflix, so we actually haven't seen the last episode, which has already been out and released on like oh, live TV. Right. Um, yeah, we're only so, we're, li- we're only on the second season, so we've got eight. We're way behind anyway. Yeah, it's good yeah, though, that isn't show's it? So good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that show was interesting. It took me a while to get into it. Like I watched the first couple episodes with my wife and I wasn't like really feeling it. Um, I, it was kind of funny, but I, I didn't really like the like rich snobbiness of it, um, which is which is like the humor of it. Um, but mm. then she started watching it more and I was kind of just in the room and I'd listen to it and I kind of like got addicted. So I like watched it like from like season three on. Um, oh, cool. So we're actually okay. going back to watching the whole thing from beginning to end again. Oh, it's cool. Is I love. I just love the scenes of when the all four of the family members are together. The dynamics between the family yeah. members, the children, and and um, more, the the main mom. You know, from Home Alone, she is just amazing. Yeah, she is. So oh yeah, good. It's so good. She's so yeah. They're all so great. I love it. I love it when the two siblings are interacting. Alexis and yeah. David. They're just, they're just. It's just so fun to watch. It is, isn't it? It's cool. Def- yeah, that's cool. You like that as well. Cool. That's awesome. Um, cool. Okay. Let's. let's <laughs> I've enjoyed that little segue. Let's go. Let's go yeah. back to your photography because there's um, one of your specific reportage awards that I love. Um, it appears, you know, just from looking at it, I might be totally wrong, but it looks like it's kind of later in the evening with what appears to be, I think, the bride and groom maybe saying goodbye to their kids for the night. Maybe is that what's happening? Oh yeah. Um, oh I yeah. Love- I love that photo. Yeah, I love that as well. Yeah. It's so real and something that you don't. You know, you don't see that much or maybe isn't captured often at all. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit more about about that shot? Yeah, that's that's that is one of my favorite photos. And it's one of those photos that happened so fast and was unexpected. Um, And it was really hard to shoot, actually. Um, But, yeah, you're right. It was it was at the very end of the night. The bride and groom were um, getting ready to kind of get in their car and go to their hotel for the evening. Um, And both of them had been married uh, previously and both had kids. Um, So when they were saying going to their car and saying goodbye, um, the I think the younger daughter ran up to her, her mom and then the, the son ran up to um, his dad and they kind of were saying goodbye. And it was like when you look at that and when I can like feel like the, the like the strength and that hug that the son is giving his dad. And then the, the girl, the little girl is crying. Um, it's just and to get both of those from both family sides of the family is such a it's such a great moment to get. I look at that often and just. Yeah love love the feeling and the emotion in that photo um it's and it was really hard yeah and it was really hard to photograph because it was it was after the sun went down there was no light nearby um it was just like pitch black i was like trying to catch something to actually autofocus and get on it in fact i think (laughs) the photo might be slightly out of focus i can't tell because like the iso was like eight thousand or something right and then i had to also increase the exposure after the fact Mm. um a lot so the grain there's a lot of grain in it but that that emotion in it is um is so great it is man it's great it's such a cool shot as you say that emotion and it's an element of the day that you know most photographers just don't capture as well i think you know they most photographers would maybe be back in the party or something or Mm -hmm. or would have gone home by then as well so i think it's awesome that you got that and it's just real life you know it's um yeah it's super i love it yeah it really is um doing that is kind of something that i picked up from uh tyler Workin. Um, I remember listening to one of his, um, I think it was his creative live class he was talking about. And he was talking about how he always follows the bride and groom 
um, to like the cars when they're like, if they're saying goodbye to the grandparents or anything who are leaving early. Um, right. And I kind of picked up on that. And I kind of like when the bride and groom kind of walk out of the reception hall and are saying goodbye to somebody, I try and follow that um, and that continue to photograph that as it happens. Cause sometimes those are the, those can be a great moments when people are saying goodbye. Sometimes those are the best ones um, mm. that I'm always kind of looking to capture. Maybe Absolutely. not for like a portfolio, but definitely for like memorable for the couple um, later on. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's really good advice, I think, as well, to do that. And as you say, yeah. with that image that I, I was speaking about, that reportage award, it doesn't matter if the high ISO or grain, you know, we never have clients, or, you know, just talking personally, you never have a client come back to you and say, well, that image was a bit grainy. It's always just something mm -hmm. that kind of photographers obsess about. But, you know, it, it, what's important is that you got the moment. It doesn't matter there's a bit of grain. Some some photographers put grain into their images in post. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, it's mad. Um, no, I love it. And if anyone's listening now, whilst, whilst walking or driving or anything, do head to the site, thisreportage.com, and I'll, I'll include um, that image that Logan just spoke about. Um, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. Um, you have a personal project, I think, as well, where you document artists of all kinds working on their craft. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. Um, it kind of came out of just kind of an interest in doing the same thing I do with wedding clients, but doing it for other types of people. And I live in an area with a lot of people that do a lot of creative things. And I was always kind of like, man, it'd be really cool just to like hang out with them for a day and photograph them kind of yeah, cool. doing what they do. Um, and it's, what, it kind of what kinds of different, that. what kinds of different creative things are you photographing? Yeah. Yeah. So the first one was, uh, was a baker who just kind of moved into town. Um, and he, he does really good, like European pastries and stuff. So he does like danishes yeah. and croissants and stuff. Um, Sounds so good. I kind of, I hung out with him for uh, a day of baking and stuff. And it was so cool because I'd never seen how any of those were actually made. So it was kind of cool just yeah, as, like a experience to see how that was made. Um, and then to photograph it and, you know, experiment with things, you know, refine how I work and try and get something different and just kind of, you know, take something, you know, grow as an artist. Mm, that's a really good idea. I think it's, you know, it's something I've never, never done. I've never really had a, a kind of personal project like that. Have you got a goal of, you know, how you're going to, is it an ongoing thing or, or you know how are you thinking about how you're going to present it and stuff or are you just kind of collating the images or what are you going to do with it yeah it's kind of right it's kind of an ongoing thing right now where i'll just kind of like photograph them put it on like a blog um, i'm trying to create like a landing page on my website that can be kind of separate from my, all my wedding stuff that can kind of be like a nice home for it um yeah, yeah. But right now i'm just kind of trying to photograph people and just kind of get as many as i can and then It'd be cool one day to do like a gallery showing of all these um, different mm. things together and to, you know, maybe get a cohesive like artist concept statement or anything. Um, but for right mm. now, it's just kind of um, have fun and photograph different things. Uh, that's cool, man. I think that's a really good idea. I, I really need to do that. I do as well. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about something, a side thing as well, I read that you like playing FIFA. Is that right? I do. Yeah. 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 So, are, am, are you a gaming fan in soccer. general or is it just uh, football, soccer? Yeah. I, I like, I like, um, I like video games, but, um, FIFA and soccer football is kind of like the thing that I could play for hours and hours and hours and never get bored. Um, uh, I, I just, I just, I just love it. Yeah. I used to play, um, pro evolution soccer a lot actually. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was that when I was playing that like 10 years ago, that the gameplay used to be so much better than FIFA, but FIFA did catch up, didn't it? I think it probably is. Yeah, better now, but... there used to be a whole bunch. There used to be like winning 11. Oh, yes. um, and yeah. Then, and then Pro Revolution. I really I can't remember which one it was, but there was like Pro Revolution or um, winning 11. They had a really cool feature where you could turn on invisible walls on the game. So <laughs> if you kicked the ball and it was like going out of bounds, it would just bounce off and they'd stay in. And it was such a fun feature to kind of play with um, that I wish they'd bring bring to FIFA because that was so so cool. That's funny. We should, yeah, let's, let's start a petition to get that into FIFA. I think, I think the realism yeah. aspect of that, they wouldn't like that, would they? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like an indoor soccer kind of vibe. I mean, we have indoor soccer here and it's, it's kind of similar vibe to that. But um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of fun. It just kind of changed the elements if you were like playing with friends and stuff because you could like bounce off of it and stuff and get around people differently. It was kind of yeah it's true cool yeah that would be good have you ever played they have like a, a five a side version of fifa don't they or like fifa street or something is that like two yeah, on I, two or something is it oh, I yeah know. i think the new one came out with it i think you can play like three on three maybe um the aspects are totally different like it's more about like doing like tricks and stuff like street tricks with the ball and stuff okay. um, the thing in fifa that i'm like the worst at i'm more like pass the ball around to get around your opponents um I'm not so good with like the, the footwork stuff, but um, but yeah, that's a that's a new feature I think they added to the new to the newest one. 
okay cool did you play much was did you play soccer at school yeah i kind of um no not at school um well i played i played like on a little rec team like um they had like little teams you could form with anybody and join and play um but i didn't i never played uh um for the actual school right cool okay i was just is it what was the scene like well there how much like exposure does soccer get though in like college and school you know when when you grow up is it is it totally small fry compared to american football um yeah i think it's definitely not as popular here um when i was growing up i mean when, in the circles that i kind of grew up in there were soccer was everybody that played soccer really loved soccer um, but once you kind of get to like the high school and then college um they had soccer teams but football was always kind of the one that um, dominated everything um in high school the everyone would their, the football games would have tons of people everybody would show up and then the soccer games would kind of just be like the parents and like a few <laughs> other people um it was never really like a big thing um unless you were like super into soccer which was just a fewer right, people but right. um but I, I mean, I graduated from high school 10 years ago, so that um, it could change because soccer is really taking off in America now um, with the MLS really kind of um, oh, taking off. Cool. So it could yeah, be I would now. like, doesn't David Beckham have a, a, a part of a team? Does he? Is it LA? Yeah. Does he? Yeah. What is it's Beckham's um, team called? I don't know what they're called. Yeah. He, he played at LA Galaxy, but I think his new team, it's like Inter Miami. Oh, is okay. What right. Called. That makes sense. Um, mm. Yeah. I don't know much about American soccer. I've always kind of been into. Um, European soccer. Um, Chelsea was always the the team that I kind of followed and uh, continued. Oh, to really? Follow. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm not much of. Didn't they, they won last night? Didn't they? I think. Although I'm not much of a fan. But yeah, yeah, we yeah <laughs> we like barely won. It wasn't the wasn't the most convincing game, but uh, yeah, we we pulled it off in the end. That's okay. That's good. Yeah. We're, we're, let's go on. We're probably bored. If if anyone's not into football, sorry, we will change, yeah. uh, change the subject. <laughs> but that was fun. Um. So as well as you've won seven reportage awards, and you've but you've also won five story awards, man, which is amazing. You know, it's so difficult. It's so difficult to win a reportage award, but and then but to win a story award, you know, even more difficult. Um, yeah. Do you have any tips in particular for the for the stories? You know, do you do you have an approach as to how you maybe choose which images you submit in a story? Because you know it's between fifteen and twenty. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the stories? Any any advice for anyone who's looking to you know maybe win? Yeah. yeah, if I was to give any advice right off the bat, I'd recommend people submitting not at the last second because that's usually that's what I do. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to I'm trying to be better at it and like um, submit maybe like a day or so before, so I have more time to think. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's really hard. Um, I kind of like to submit the ones that I feel most connected to. Um, and I think, I think looking at the photos that I gravitate towards more the most, um, and you're not just doing and making sure that the, the gallery is like well-rounded, um, that there's all sorts of different photos. Um, and sometimes it's interesting cause you know, we think, um, documentary work, it's all about having people in it and stuff. But sometimes there's there's stories even within the details um, that I've done um, where it's like maybe like there's just a hand in it or something that really tells a story, um, but it's not even like a person, just to kind of round out the whole um, the whole gallery a little bit. Um, you know, it's not just like plain details of like um, like table settings or something, unless there's like a really like obvious story there that really um, rounds out the whole gallery um yeah so it's just sense. kind of like kind of uh you know making it well-rounded and trying to uh, offer different things different perspectives um to things mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. great that's i wouldn't cool, say i'm man. the best the best person to give advice on this but that's kind of kind of what i've done no that's good advice yeah. and i think yeah. anything that you say on it is obviously like it means a lot because i mean winning mm -hmm. five story awards is, is so amazing man it really is yeah it's, just, it's, it's testament to your just your overall kind of creativity and consistency which is yeah uh, yeah that's the goal isn't it for all of us i guess uh, yeah I think really yeah and it's something i still work on like every time i get one i'm still blown away and sh shocked and um surprised that i've gotten one so it's it's no, still that's... always a yeah, fun thing to get it's cool, man. Proper, proper deserved. Um, while we're on the subject of you shooting, actually, do, do you shoot solo or do you shoot with seconds? How do, do you mix it up? How do you normally work? Yeah, I kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, all my packages usually, it's just me. Um, and then I, I usually just strongly recommend a second shooter, but it's not something that I require. Um, just because some weddings where it's like 50 people, then probably just having one person is good enough and a second photographer could be too much. Um, but um, I'd say about 50-50, I shoot by myself and then 50% okay. with, uh, with a second. Do you have a preference personally? Do you prefer to shoot with someone or prefer on your own? Yeah, I, it kind of differs every time. It kind of depends. But um, I think I love shooting with another person. 
because it just like adds another person that I can like hang out with and talk to and like um, be like, hey, what do you think we should do for the ceremony on this? Because this is what's happening. Or, or how about for the first dance, you do that and I do this and then we can kind of work together as a team. So I think I kind of like that aspect more of having someone there to kind of bounce ideas off of and work as a team. Mm, that makes sense you know i need to do it i've never had a second ever i need to do it i need to try it at least i need to do it oh that's crazy <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just the way i've always done it i guess but it yeah. makes total sense to have one and i definitely see the benefit and that's it i should do it sometime i should do it sometime yeah um, I, I, I was i was similar to you I, I shot all by myself like the first two years um nobody really ever added one or wanted one and then it was something i kind of have further pushed the the more i've been doing it uh right okay no that's cool makes sense yeah. um let's go to a light throwaway question then logan um what does it mean to be successful to you that's a great question <laughs> and something i think of kind of all the time um that's cool. but i think to be successful hmm i think i think for me kind of it go it's it's to be happy with where i'm at in my business mm-hmm. to be happy with the work that i'm creating happy with the clients that I'm photographing. Mm. I think that's kind of, for me, that's, that's being successful. If I can be, make, be happy with, with the work that I'm creating. Yeah. That's, that sounds like success to me. I mean, just yeah. ha- happiness in general and yeah, to be happy with what you're creating, what you're shooting, the clients you're getting, that is success, isn't mm-hmm. it? That's great. Yeah. 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 Great. I mean, there, there are other ways. Um, financially is also a, another way to do it, but um but I'd rather be happy with the work that I'm creating and the work that I'm doing, the people I'm working with than, than any amount of money. Mm, that's such a great mindset. I totally yeah. agree with that. I totally agree with that. Um, cool. I love that answer. That's great. Let's go to um, another one, a totally original question, although it's not really. If you've ever heard Desert <laughs> Island Discs, which is a, a big uh, kind of thing in, in, in England anyway. But yeah, imagine mm-hmm. you're cast away on a desert island what mm-hmm. one what one album would you take with you if you could only take one album what would it be mm, that is a tough one <laughs> um let's see i think there's a couple and they're all from like my high school days when i really started getting into music um, um i think i think it would be there's a band called motion city soundtrack and their album commit this to memory it's one of those albums where every single song on the album is just like perfect. Like there's no songs that I would skip. And it's just like one of those great albums. They're like a, a electronic pop. Okay. Band. I've heard of the band, but I've never, I don't think I've heard the music, but I've definitely heard of them. Yeah. They're mm. really good. Their lead singer is like really, really good at like creating like catchy lyrics and their music. is just so, it's just so ener- energizing. It, they're really good. Cool. Well, I will let you have that on your desert island. So yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, in, in terms of marketing for you, you know, getting yourself out there, what's mm-hmm. what's been the most effective kind of tool for you? You know, how do you how do you get like, kind of a lot of your weddings? Yeah, um, I think a lot of my work um, comes from referrals from past clients. Um, you cool. know, I spend a lot of time on marketing, like social media and my blog and my website. And I've done some advertising in the past, but time and time again, referrals from my past clients have always been the ones that have um, brought in some of the best weddings that I've done. Um, and not just referrals from clients, but just referrals from other people I know, other photographers. Um, okay. Those are always, it's always the best, uh, been the best uh, marketing tool for me. Yeah, and, and I get that, that other, that word of mouth. I mean, the referrals from other photographers is great as well, isn't it? I mean, that's, yeah, it's so cool. Do you, you know, when you started out, did you, um, kind of network and things and I, i'm saying this not not so that you would get that reciprocation mm-hmm. but did you just reach out and kind of meet up with other photographers at all is it a friendly scene where you are there or is it more mm-hmm. kind of online that you know other photographers or yeah um for, for i mean for me i'm more of like an introverted person so for networking of like reaching out to people and like going and get coffee is something that like just is not natural for me or like feel comfortable for me so i do a lot of my that. networking um through like Facebook groups and things like that. And my like favorite way to network with people is to second shoot for other people. Oh, um, cool. I love going there and photographing with other people. Um, and it's a great way for me to just be more relaxed and get to know somebody while we're also shooting and kind of working together. Um, mm. So that's been my favorite way of actually marketing um, or networking with people in my, uh, in my community. Oh, um, cool. It's something second shooting is fun too. Cause you kind of have like a different perspective on the day. You kind of have a different role. 
Um, it's kind of mm. fun to change it up, kind of like a, um, a palate cleanser in a way. So yeah, um, it's something I love to do. So. Oh, that's cool. Do you still um, try to do that, like even in, even in the main season when you've got your own weddings? Yeah, um, if I don't have anything for a weekend and somebody needs somebody, I'm I'm always up for like doing that. Um, any cool. any time. I don't think I'll ever grow out of that. It's just something fun I love to do. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, great, awesome. Um, has there been a specific kind of turning point in your career? You know, something, perhaps a certain wedding or a certain award or anything that's had a kind of like a major impact on your, you know, on your career, your photography, your trajectory, maybe. Yeah, there've been a number of things. Um, from there've been a number of things. Um, like the first time I ever switched from shooting JPEG to shooting RAW was oh, like cool. a huge, like eye-opening experience for me when I learned all the different things you can do with a raw file. Um, and then going from like Photoshop to Lightroom was like a huge jump for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think like the biggest one in my career was when I met um, my my kind of early mentor, Matt Shoemate. Um, and he kind of took me under his wing and kind of told me, taught me all about what um, shooting weddings in a documentary style can be. That really kind of changed everything in my mindset. Um, it really oh. shifted everything 180 um, um, from then on. Um, and there have been a number of other things, but that's kind of like, I'd say the biggest thing. Like if I'd never met him and learned about that, then I might not actually be where I'm at today. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. really nice, so I, I think. Lots of him. Yeah. Oh, I hope he's listening. I hope he's listening. I know. <laughs> um what you know we see some strange things in our job as wedding photographers um i'm sure you've seen some things what's the the most bizarre or funniest thing that you've seen at a wedding oh this is a tough one this is kind of like the what's your favorite concert that you've ever oh, yeah. done it's, it's like where somebody asking you like all of a sudden your mind runs blank um, i know one, sorry yeah. yeah there's one that i did there's one though that always stands out that i'll never forget and it's kind of crazy um and it's it's it yeah um i won't try and go too much into it but it was it was a very early wedding i photographed um and it was actually second shooting for somebody else um i can't remember who they are now um but it, we were second we were shooting a wedding and the groom um he kind of he drank a little too much earlier in the day um and actually ended up getting sent home um oh, wow before the wedding like finished and i was it was kind of like a weird first experience i was kind of like whoa um oh, that might be the, the the most crazy thing um but there have been some other crazy things but um, well that's pretty crazy that's the groom getting sent top. home yeah the groom <laughs> getting sent home before the end is quite crazy i know so bad. um do oh, you you know popped in and she told me another <laughs> she she reminded me of another one um i actually shot a wedding for a couple um when was it? It was, it was a number of years ago. It was like four or five years ago. But they were getting married at the top of a mountain. And the only way to get to the place where they were getting married was to ski. And I'd actually never skied before in my life. And they were like, well, if you learn to ski, you're totally more than welcome to do this. And I was like, okay, I'll do this. So I took wow. one ski lesson. And then like a, a couple weeks later, went to their wedding and uh, skied my way to the to their wedding ceremony site and then back down the hill without uh, hurting myself. Oh man, that is good going. Yeah. We just won lesson beforehand. That... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it, it was a green though. It was a green. It wasn't like a red or a, it wasn't a blue or a, I can't oh, remember. I've, a black. I have, no, I, I have no idea. I've never skied in my life actually. So I have no idea about that, but yeah, man, that's dedication though. That is dedication. Yeah. And it was definitely worth it. And now, and now I ski today. So uh, I got a fun new hobby out of it as well. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to go far for where's I, I again, sorry, my geography is so bad of America. Mm -hmm. how, how Are you in anywhere near kind of uh, snow, snow at all? Yeah. Um, we're actually, I actually love where I live because we're really close to water forest. And then the mountains are only like an hour or two away. Um, oh, cool. so we're actually pretty lucky. There's like a huge mountain range just, um, East of Seattle and then, and then all, and then all around actually, but there's a huge mountain range that kind of goes through there and there's a bunch of different uh, spots to go skiing. Oh, that's cool. Oh man. Yeah. It does sound like you're in a, a really cool place actually. And yeah. And this I'm interested. I oh, know, sorry, going totally off change the subject again. Sorry, I do change subjects quite a lot. But just, I want to get I like to get so much in. Um No, I like the variations. Good. Oh, that's cool. Good. <laughs> um with you, you know, not even you're not even 30 yet. I mean, do you think do you think about the future, whether you'll, you know, still be shooting weddings in like 10, 15 years time? You know, do you mm -hmm. do you think like that far ahead? You know, and there's no right or wrong answer. Some people do, some yeah. people don't. I'm just just interested, you know. Yeah, no, I think about it all the time because um there, there are people in these in some photography communities that I'm in that talk about um 
just the wear and tear on your body that shooting weddings take and then all of the all the all the, the kind of physical condition you need to be in to photograph a wedding and i think about that i'm like do you think do you think i'd be able to do this when i'm 40 um so i think about that all the time and kind of how i'll you know, maybe pivot my career into a different direction or kind of, you know, I think I'll always photograph weddings. I think it'll be something I'll always be interested in doing, um, but maybe not as a full-time thing. Maybe I photograph maybe two or three or five in a year um, and kind of pivot in that way. Um, I'm always constantly thinking about that. Um, I don't know exactly. Yeah. Mm. But by the way, just to say uh, that I, I'm 40 in like about six months. I, it's still fine to photograph at 40. You know? so yeah. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is really interesting. And I'm, I I think about it, you know, quite often as well. And it's just, yeah, well, I, I remember, you know, a few years ago thinking that, you know, will couples still want to book me when I'm like, you know, mid 40s or something? Will they want yeah. younger photographer and things? But then people yeah. get married at all different kind of ages as well. And maybe, you know, slightly older couples may want a slightly older photographer. And there's, there's hundreds of thousands of people getting married. Yeah, that's true. I photographed a couple last year, I think, and they were both in their, I think they were both in their forties. Um, and those weddings are they're they're actually they're actually some of the best weddings I photograph sometimes of the older couples because they just have such a different perspective on life and mm -hmm. the weddings and celebrations they throw are, are wonderful. So if anything, having that market to to relate to when I'm older would be a plus for me. Even yeah, that's true, isn't it? Mm, it's true. Yeah. What do you think yeah. you would do, you know, what would you do if you did step away from weddings? You know, do you ever, you know, if you, if you didn't do photography at all, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, what would you do if you weren't a photographer? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I've thought about that before because I went to school for interior design. Oh, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah. And I did that for like three years. And then photography was always something I wanted to do. So I only did interior design for three years and then um, retired from that, I guess. Um, <laughs> Um, but I think if I was to do something else, um, I've always been kind of very entrepreneurial and I think, um, owning some type of business would be something, some other type of business that wasn't photography, um, would be something that I'd be interested in. Um, I've always really been into restaurants and cooking. Um, mm -hmm. and I think maybe that would be, if I was to, to, to pivot would be something I'd be really interested in. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration actually from like chefs and I watched the, if you've never seen the chef's table on Netflix. I haven't um, no. Oh, it's a very it's a very inspiring kind of documentary um, show about um, different chefs, some of the world's best chefs and stuff. And every time I watch that, I always get very inspired um, to to cook and be like, oh man, it'd be really cool to own a restaurant someday, where you oh. kind of experiment and be artistic. Um, so yeah. I think that that might be what I pivot to. Oh, that'd be cool, man. You should do it. Yeah. Do you, do you cook much at home then? Yeah, whenever we get the chance, we always love experimenting with different dishes and things, um, trying new foods, new recipes. Um, oh, we went to Thailand for our honeymoon, and when we were there, we took a cooking class. Um, so we brought back all the recipes, and every once in a while, um, try, uh, tr play, play around with those uh, different um, spices and you oh, know recipes. That sounds good. Oh, I've never been yeah. to Thailand, and never been to Thailand, and I'm an awful cook. I can cook like spaghetti bolognese and beans on toast. I think that is about it, actually. That is my repertoire. <laughs> yeah, my, my, mine, mine was never that big until I met my wife, and then it's kind of ever since when we were dating, it was kind of something that we always loved to do together was to cook cook meals together, and she's taught me a lot of stuff. And oh, that's cool. That's and does yeah. she she second shoots for you sometimes? Does she? Yeah, she does. Um, she was kind of, um, as I was trying to take my career and become full time, she was kind of always someone there that I could bounce ideas off of and show blog posts to and be like, hey, what do you think of these photos and stuff? And she always had really good opinions on stuff and could help me narrow down photos. Um, and then after a while, we got her a camera and she started taking pictures and she came along to second shoot for, for fun a couple of times. And she's gotten uh, to the point where I bring her along to second shoot um, all the oh, time now. So it's a lot cool. of fun that we can we can do that together oh yeah that's nice do you do you never argue at a wedding or anything no don't fall out is it always like perfect perfect unison no it's never it's never perfect but um <laughs> it, it's definitely um something we work on but it, it's definitely something that i i love to do and it's she's she's so creative and and good in her own right that um it's definitely uh oh. a blessing to have in my business oh that's cool and hope yeah. when she listens when she listens to this back now that's brownie points as well man that's brownie points yeah. <laughs> exactly I, <laughs> she's probably sitting there right in front of you now isn't she <laughs> yeah well she's in the other room and i'm pretty sure she can hear everything i'm saying <laughs> yeah um is there is there anything that kind of 
bugs you or annoys you about our industry at all? That's a great question. Um, um, there are some things, um, but there are things that usually I don't have to interact with as much based on kind of the clients that I work with, um, based on kind of the work that I share. Um, most of the people that come come to me to have me photograph their weddings, they're they're looking, they're really looking for those photos that are more about the people and the connection and the stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of really kind of fits right into what I do. So, um, I don't have to interact with a lot of things that I don't like within our industry as much. Um, well, that, that, that's cool. I mean, and how do you think you, you get those clients that want, you know, those moments and the storytelling, is it, I guess, just down to everything that you show really? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's what I've heard from other people is just kind of show the work show the work that you want to shoot for, and then you'll get that. Um, but it's really interesting. I was listening to a, um, um, a conversation between two photographers yesterday, and they were also saying that um, it's good to do that, but then it's also good to show some of the other stuff that you also photograph that might not be exactly what's your favorite thing to do. Um, because every time you remove something and you don't show that, then you're automatically removing a potential client that could have hired you for something that you photograph that you just aren't necessarily showing in your work. So I've kind of been thinking about that too, of like showing some more stuff that isn't my favorite thing to photograph, but I, I definitely will photograph during the day. Um, so it's kind of an, it's an interesting, um, give and take. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? It's interesting. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what I love again about what we do. And it's just the same with shooting, you know, everybody can shoot a wedding totally differently and everybody can run mm -hmm. their businesses totally differently. And I, I love that. Imagine how boring it would be if we all had to pass a kind of like wedding photography exam and we all had to shoot the oh, same yeah. way. It'd be so boring, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? It'd be everybody had to edit their photos in the same way. They will have to oh. shoot portraits in the same way. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really cool that there's all these different styles. Um, actually, one of my goals is to I want to be photographed by all my favorite photographers oh, that's cool the the spectrum is wide for the people that i look up to and um really are inspired by and they're all their work is so different that it'd be cool to um ex get, get that experience of being photographed by all your favorites and yeah that's a great idea actually yeah yeah that is a great idea although i oh, man i hate having my photograph taken in general i really got to get over that i really yeah do you not mind that are you okay yeah no, I'm the same way. It's not my favorite thing. Um, but when we had our engagement photos and wedding photos taken, it was it was such a great experience um, from both sides. I, and I learned so much from them just in the way that they shoot um, that it's kind of I think it's a really good experience to have yourself photographed because um, you learn so much um, just from like a business point of view. Um, mm, that but makes uh, sense. It, yeah, it's good to be on the other side every once in a while, but it's, it's definitely not my favorite. Was it tricky finding your own wedding photographer? I mean, because you were, I presume you were a wedding photographer at the time when you were choosing your own wedding photographer. Yeah, yeah. It was only uh, two years ago that we were oh, doing wow. that. I guess three years ago we were doing the planning. Um, and it was, it, was, it was easy to, to gather all the people I wanted to photograph it. And then it was mm -hmm. hard to narrow it down because there were so many people that I kind of um, really liked their work. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, really really happy with the with the person we hired and the photos that she took um uh caroline roberts um out of austin texas in colorado was who shot our wedding and she did a phenomenal job oh that's cool great yeah. good stuff and i hope she's listening as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man this is honestly i just looked at the time it's like it's absolutely though i, I it's flown so i've got oh just do i have time for one more logan sorry it, yeah. it flies sure. um yeah. what would let's fun. do yeah, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. It feels yeah, like it's the first time I've ever spoke to you, but it feels like I've, I've known you. It's awesome. Um, what would okay? Let's end on this one because it's always interesting. I think what would be your your top tips to help someone get better at the documentary side of what we do? Obviously, you know, with reportage, that is our, our focus. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, you 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 do so well at just nailing those moments. So, yeah, the documentary side in general. What would what would be your kind of top tips? Um, I, th I think my, the biggest thing that I'd recommend is for people to just keep shooting and just keep developing those skills. And the best way to do that is photograph the people closest to you, photograph your friends, photograph your family. If you have kids, photograph your kids. Um, um, I'm, I'm doing that, uh, artist series where I'm photographing artists in their, in their workspaces, doing what they do. And just by doing that, I'm, every time I take a picture, every time I do it, I'm getting better at what I do. Um. So I would just I would just do that, develop some type of small passion project or something of photographing people. Um, it'd be a great way nowadays to to kind of volunteer for an organization where you feel like you could go in and be kind of like an on the wall, on the like um, 
documentary for this for an or, or organization um so it, that's kind of what i'd recommend just kind of find a passion project and just you know make it fun and make it um personal and photograph it and you'll continue to develop your skills and get better over time i think that's great advice i really do yeah it's something that i need to do honestly i i, I really do mm, I, I i yeah at some point i will do i really do need to do that yeah Oh, man. Oh, Matt, thank you so much. I really enjoy talking to you. And thank you for your, your honesty and openness. Openness, probably not a word. But yeah, honestly, I really enjoyed that, man. I think um, hopefully, you know, people listening, I think they'll take loads from that. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for wanting to talk to me. I really, really love This Is Reportage. And it's so much fun to, every time to, to submit my stuff. And I, I love that you started the family one, too. I'm really excited to start submitting to that. And oh, I'm that's excited cool. to check out oh awesome man yeah thanks for being part of that as well and yeah as i say anyone listening do head to the site this is com, and there'll be i'll include loads of examples of logan's work and that specific reportage award um that he spoke about earlier as well and yeah man thanks so much for your time and and hopefully i'll get to uh, get hopefully maybe meet you one day that would, that would be awesome yeah maybe we'll meet in vegas even oh yeah yeah we'll do it <laughs> you come over for that yeah. one night i'll do it as well <laughs> yeah. a bit longer flight for me how long is it the flight yeah. for you would it be to vegas um, I think from here it might be like an hour or two. Oh, it's pretty. Is, it's pretty close. That's so good. It's like eleven hours for me. Eleven. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do you it then. We're gonna do the one day thing. Yeah. No, <laughs> that would be. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Awesome. Thanks so much for that. And yeah, and uh, you stay safe. Yeah. You too. You have a good one. Bye, man. Bye, bye. All right. Bye. You've been listening to the fortieth episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Really enjoyed talking to Logan. Hope you enjoyed listening too. Head to thisisreportage.com to see examples of his work and link to his website, as well as the specific reportage award we talk about in the episode. We also have 39 other episodes of the podcast already released with photographers such as Sana de Bloch, Ross Harvey, Eve Sieppers, Dominique Shaw of York Place Studios and many more. If you're not yet a member of TIR, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 reportage award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers, and much more. We've also just launched our sister site for documentary family photography. This is Reportage Family. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for now.